Okay. Good afternoon, dear students, Dr. Sunita. I am very pleased to be invited by AUD to share my experiences using the principles of Lean Startup Method. Before anything else, I would like to introduce our company, my business consulting, DMCC, and myself, Alina Concepcion, COO of the company. Our company has been servicing foreign investors as corporate service provider in fields of business consultancy, accounting, bookkeeping, tax advisory, and immigration advisory in the UAE and abroad for the last 12 years. Our company is one of the top consulting companies in Dubai, and we are awarded by DMCC as top performing consultants for the last consecutive five years. Our company is proud to be of service to various types of clients, mostly SME, publicly listed companies, and government-owned entities. I am working in this company for the last nine years. And believe me, I have experienced and witnessed so many changes in the UAE business for the last nine years. When you hear the word change, most of the people, especially the young generation, tend to get tense because change means new adjustments and adjustments is scary. However, in our company, we consider change as equivalent to opportunity. And this is how Lean Startup Method is best practiced. Our company is 12 year old. Obviously we have existing list of products and list of services, and we are no longer a startup. However, UAE market is always changing. Hence, developing a product even on a 12-year-old company is a must on a regular basis. As you know, and as what Dr. Zonita brief, um, briefly discussed a while ago, Lean Startup Method is the quickest way to launch any product which gives the company the opportunity to take feedback from clients. Taking feedbacks from clients is very important because this is the main source of improving your product. When an idea kicks in, the company must build the product accordingly. Measure the data required and learn if it's effective or not. The company can evaluate if retention of the product can be of short-term basis or long-term basis after its first try. The main product of our company is service because we are a corporate service company. And this is how we apply lean startup method. Idea. Before you generate idea, you need to educate yourself. So in our company, awareness of new and upcoming business trends by following the news and posts from government bodies is a must. In our company, we need to be up to date in the information on UAE rules and regulation and cabinet decisions. And we need to have the attitude to initiate a prevention or a cure as a product for our clients. Once you have the idea out from the knowledge you have gathered, you need to build the product. So in our company, building the product involves researches of the procedures, required documents, applicable fees, penalties, and any points to consider for that particular product. We also need to consider the manpower time structuring. How many employees will be involved to execute that product? And creation of detailed proposal for our clients and detailed procedure for employee in charge to follow. 
After that, once the product is there, we need to measure how effective it is by reviewing the procedures and update if there is any changes we need to do by obtaining the client's feedback, by obtaining employees' feedback. It is very important because the employee are the ones who will advise the management how we can do the product better. And we need to update the information because as what I have said, in the UAE, the rules is changing gradually and overnight. So we need to be aware all the time. I would like to give you an example. Um, the latest example that we have recently is when we launch our services for ESR. Do you know what is ESR? Does anyone know what ESR stands for? Okay, even I don't know, Alina. So ESR is Economic Substance Regulations. This service is based on the UAE Cabinet of Ministers Resolution Number 31 of 2019 about building a substance of every company in the UAE depending on their activities. So you can check it on later on in our website if you have time to learn about this regulation. It's very important actually for students like you to, you know, to, to check what is happening in the UAE market, especially what are the regulations involved in terms of business. So when we launch this service, we know or we come to know about it through the post from the government. So upon knowing the regulation, we assign a competent team in our company to review the regulation and gain knowledge about the topic by involving them in all trainings and seminars. After obtaining the knowledge, we have concluded that we can actually offer the service to our clients. It is a need. They need to follow that regulation. Then we quickly prepare the procedures, we quickly prepare what are the information and requirements we need from the client and the fees. We immediately create a page in our website about the topic and send newsletters to clients to educate them about the regulation and how we can assist them. The word assist is our product. The product was launched just one week after the, the government issued the new regulation. And it was a success. After the deadline of notification, we have asked clients feedback and it was all positive except the speed of completion because that time we have, we have a lot of clients and you know, we have a very small team. So the, 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 the speed of completion was very slow. So we changed it, we, we apply it in our procedures and we, we somehow changed a little bit. Then we tried to, to, to review the product. And after that, we concluded that that particular product can actually be a long term because all of the clients requires that every year. So for that particular product, our company gained around 150,000 dirhams for just half of a month. So this is what I'm saying that in our company, applying this lean startup principles is really good. The method of launching the product in our company is practiced many times. In fact, we have launched more than 200 services over the years by just using this method. Um, before I will end my slides and before I could give you the floor for questions, I want to tell you one thing. No matter what method you use to create your product, you need to have an extraordinary team because whatever planning you do, what in your company, whatever methodology or strategy you want to implement, you need a group of individuals with solid and extensive teamwork 
to ensure effectivity and success of the product. Success of company is not a one-man show. So whatever product you are planning to design in the future, you need to be smart in choosing your team and you need to train them accordingly to be of your standards. That's all. And I want to give the floor for questioning from any of you. So feel free to ask me any questions. Thank you, Alina. I would like to give a feedback before I give the floor to the students. It was an excellent presentation. You actually articulated the lean management system and you showed how it is being applied. So you kind of uh, made it three dimensional and it was really very nice because uh, very few people understand how to apply lean management system in a service industry or for a service product. And I think the way you explained it was really, really, really very good. And I'm sure my students really understood because very, most of them are looking at service uh, and not product development. So they would have understood what do we mean by idea to product, to lean development, to customer development. So I would leave the floor for them to ask you questions. The second thing I think I love the fact that you spoke about team because this is what we've been speaking in the last class and this class that uh, if there's any risk that that really puts a startup to risk, it is team. If you don't have a good team and from their personal experience of having gone through a project themselves and as they work in teams in different classes, uh, that is something that uh, should sink in very, very strongly to, in them as they grow up into strong individuals and founders tomorrow. That team, as you said rightly, pick, choose your team wisely ensure that you have a good team and if you don't then develop your team to the standard that you wish to set for yourself so very very well said very well covered and i love that all the, that you covered so guys questions i want one question from each table let's start yes good good guys yes Rekas. You said that in the first slide there are 25 employees. Is this your team or is there like, like a vast majority from all around the world? That you said that? I'm sorry, I cannot hear you well. Um, can you, you can come in the front records and ask. Yeah, you can come and sit here and ask, no problem. Yeah. So you said that there's a team of 25 people or 25 employees. Is this your team or do you have like different branches around the world to have like more team members in your team or do you like to keep your, keep your team small? So this is our team in the UAE. We have team outside the UAE, which is which are outsource companies to support our team in the UAE. We don't have branches around the world, but hopefully next year we can start, you know, like preparing the, the, the expansion plan. So the 25 employees are just in the UAE. Thank you. All right. Hamad, can you come here and ask? If you uh, can shout, you can ask from there. <laughs> or if you have a voice as loud as mine. Yeah. So in the, I think the last second You, last, you can open, remove it and ask, yeah. So in the second last slide, you also mentioned uh, the lean startup method, and there are three parts learning, building, and then measuring. What I'm interested in is in the measuring part. Now, how do you exactly Not measure? Or what is the most ex effective way to measure how your product or your service uh, does? Okay, thank you for that question. Actually, since our product is based on services, the best measuring tool is the feedback from the clients because without feedbacks from the clients, and we don't just ask clients feedback, by the way, when the service turned out to be excellent. We ask clients feedbacks all the time because we always believe that what clients, I mean, we always believe that the client's feedback is the, the only thing that will help us improve our services. Aside from that, nothing else. This is the only thing. How we measure our product is just from the feedbacks of our client. And if you check our website, you can see the feedbacks from our clients there, like with pictures and company names. So you can check. Go after one of the leads. Don't sit like that on that so far. <laughs> yes, you can sit there when they leave. 
don't just jump and come to it. Only four are allowed here. Next is, uh, yes, Asar. Uh, you were talking about feedback. What actions did you do after your clients of the feed, about the feedback that they said your service is slow? I cannot hear you well. Can you repeat the question? We're talking about feedback from your clients after the ASR service. May I know what measures you took after they said the process took too long? After we received the feedback. So the question is that what, what action did you take after you received the feedback, especially when you got a negative feedback? So how did you work on that? Okay. First of all, when we receive a negative feedback from the client, we investigate the source of that negative feedback. So it can be from the employee, it can be from the authority, it can be from the fees. So we need to check the specified um, issue. And then after that, we need to provide an action. Because first, in our company, once first issue happened, it should not, it should not uh, happen again. So immediately, we change our procedure. And immediately, we inform the team how to prevent such problem in the future. So it will not be repeated. Thank you very much. So is, you I, I, um, I would like to ask one more. I would like to add one more thing. This is why I'm emphasizing on the last slide about teamwork. Because if you have a very strong team, they are open to all suggestions and recommendations, not only from the client, but also from the management. So if we have a very good team, they can immediately adjust to any changes you want to implement in the procedures that you currently have for your product. Okay. Thank you, Asad. Thank you, thank you Hamad, and thank you, Rekas. Yes, Asad, you can go back. And next is Arya. Arya? Thank you, Asad. That was a very good question. Yeah. Yes, Arya. Can you move your mask and ask so that it's clear? As a service provider, what challenges have you encountered while developing the service? So, what were your challenges when you were developing the service? Okay. Others, I would request you to not talk because it is disturbing. That the, the main challenges is how frequent the UAE rules and regulations is changing. So this is this is the main challenges we are facing because we are already um, reviewing the regulations and then suddenly over time, the UAE um, government bodies will inform us that oh this is changed. So, you know, and they want to implement it within one week. So while we are still designing the product, we need to immediately implement that change, which the, the, the authority informed us. It's, it's a bit challenging because, especially if we have already released a newsletter to clients, or if we already released some information to clients and there is some changes going on, that, 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 that's where the challenges came. But, all the time, we, we can adjust to it immediately and we can we inform the client immediately what are the changes available, you know, so we can have an action yeah. and we can do the procedure properly. So you have to be agile at all times. You have to be up. Yes, exactly. Catching the bus running. Uh, so any other question? Thank you, Arya. That was a very, very good question. Yes, Ibrahim. Um, I wanted to ask, so- after, Anyone else, please come here. So come after all here. your years of working in this company, um, uh -huh. what uh, what goals do you have for the future do you think this is where it stops or do you think there's limits that can be exceeded and if so uh, what aspects do you want to achieve that in can you ask one question yes what are your goals for the future hello yes can you repeat the question <laughs> Uh, hi, uh, what are your goals for the future, in summary? What are my goals for the future? What, uh, that have to do with the company you're working with, for yourself and for the company. Okay, so from the very beginning, because now we have offices in JLT, we have a total of three offices in JLT. From the very beginning while working in this company, I, I told our um, company owner that I want to see the company having a full floor of offices 
in the same building. That's one of my dream. And also to, 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 to open branch outside the UAE, which hopefully we can deploy it by next year. We will see. But I want to tell you, um, I want to tell all of you that, you know, U UAE is a land of opportunity. Now you are a student and I'm sure that you know what are the opportunities available in the UAE market. So companies like us, we tend to have a long-term plans and short-term plans. Short-term plans is whatever you can do as fast as possible and long-term plans is what you want to achieve in the future. Our company wants to be the ultimate expertise of corporate service provider in the UAE. I think that's the same thing, which I like personally dream to see my business consulting in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much. Yes, Olu. Yes, one of you come here. A question, um, please. So basically you talked about having a very strong team. Liar? So I'd like to ask when you want to employ someone, what do you really look up for when you want to employ someone to be to be sure that the person is capable Emma, come back to table. doing what you're expecting, like reaching the expectation? What do you really look up for whatever better you carry it to employ someone? Recently, we have a um, job opening in our company. We have three job openings, actually. And just last week, we were so busy. Um, checking applicants and interviewing them and all of this recruitment procedures. What we are actually looking in our team is those people who have same values and culture like us, because our company or our team is composed with extraordinary members. When you say extraordinary, these employees are not ordinary. They have, they, they are working hard to be someone extra. When you say extra, now everything is automated. Employees tend to work like robots. Anywhere we go, we can see employees working like robots. Our company, we want, we want employee here to have that sense of initiative, to have common sense, to, to, to have passion towards the services they are offering to clients. And our HR manager, she's very great. She has designed so many procedures in place to enable us check if the employee or if the applicant is actually in our same culture. So we did preliminary interviews, we have questionnaires, we have preliminary training and out of that preliminary training, they were asked to answer questions, logical questions, logical answering, so something like that. But despite the very long procedure, we are not going to be 100% sure that that employee will be extraordinary. So once we employ that employee, we give our time to train them. We give our time for them to adjust to our, um, to our culture. We even have few employees, they have worked in the same um, business field like us before. And then when we join us, they told me that Ms. Elena, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm being culture in shock because though I'm working in the same corporate service company, like my business consulting, in this company, it's really different. You have everything in place, procedures in place, and everything is fast, everything is quick, and you are giving us the opportunity to think and to be initiative. So that is something. So when we, when we, when we hire employees, we check their background, and after we hire the employees, we train them. Thank you, Alina. Thank you, Olu. Hire employees without training them because the business will fail if they are not into the same page like how you want the business to be. What's so, your question? So as you told us, and as we all know, the teamwork and the team is important. So how do you uh, know the performance or how do you measure the performance of your team? How do you measure employee performance? So for our employee performance, we have our own KPI. So each employee 
has a different set of KPI, which is measured every month. I don't want to go into details. For so key performance indicators. Yes, it's key, key performance indicator. And our HR and the direct manager of every employees are evaluating it on a monthly basis. And then on a quarter base, we, um, we call the employee for a meeting with the management to discuss their performance for the whole quarter. Whole quarter means three months. And then we tell them what are our recommendations. And not only that, we ask them also, what are their recommendations to make their work better? So, you know, it's, it's, it's a give and take process, but the employees knows what are their responsibility and how they need to meet the level of responsibility expected to them. Thank you, Elena. We have one more minute. So yes, Hani, thank you so much, Kabir. Yes. Hi, sir. Yes, one minute. One, one minute. Put my... You put what? your question in the chat. I have a question here from Hani. Yes, Hani, quickly. Do you think having 25 employees is enough for your company? Yeah, is 25 employees enough for the company? Okay, so every year, the management is sitting together and prepare the plan for the next year. I so, want you to wait till the speaker leaves. I will, you will leave after the speaker leaves. Please sit down. Yes. Okay. So as what I have said, every year, the management team in our company is preparing the plan for the next year. So in 2020, we have planned to extend the number of employees up to 25 employees. Next year, we are still yet to confirm how many employees we will extend, but it actually depends on our um, growth plan. Thank you, Elena. I, I would I like to move to the next question, please. Okay. Uh, sorry to interrupt you here. Thank you so much, Hani. Ulkit, what's your question? Professor, I have put it on the chat. Okay, I can't see. Yeah, how do we decide that a product service is viable for the customer for the first round of feedback? So how do you uh, ensure that your service that you're offering to your customer is what the customer needs? In our company, we are providing services and this services is based actually on the UAE rules and regulations and any cabinet decision. So from the very beginning, we already know if the client actually needs the service. So we also evaluate which clients we will educate because some services, some clients don't need it. So when we launch the product, we only reach out to those clients who, after evaluation, we um, conclude that they need the services. But um, I think the best question would be after the first round of feedback, it will be concluded if that particular services will be a long-term services for our company is when that particular service is required by client on yearly basis. All right. So I would like to stop here, Elena. That was uh, really nice. And the students have shown a lot of interest in asking you a lot of questions. Yeah. So they are giving you a good clap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share your email ID with them. And if they have any further questions, they can ask you. So I'm going to let you go here because they are waiting because they have another class next okay thank you so much and it was i was really pleasure to be with all of you today thank you so much for inviting me thank you so much alina thank Take you care.